Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Woodpecker's Deep Dive. Today, we're gonna to take a look at Woodpecker's woodworking rules. Uh, the various models that we have available, the different scales that are available for it, and the options you can get. It's a great rule. Uh, it's a staple of every woodworking shop. Uh, you got to have some quality measuring equipment, and this is one of the best you can buy. Before we get started, I'd like to ask you to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll always know when we're coming out with another deep dive or one of our other great videos. Now these are the sizes I use a lot in the shop. I have the 6 and a 24 and the 48. Now there's also a 12 inch and a 36 inch. So woodpeckers woodworking rules always are engraved on both sides, uh, but they don't always have exactly the same scale on each side. And we try and make this uh, more versatile in your shop. Uh, so if we take a look here, you can see that if you can read standard scale, then the numbers across the top edge are going to start on the left and go to the right. Then if we flip it over so that you can read center scale, now the zero point is right in the middle of the rule. So let's see how the standard scale and center scale work together. Uh, first, let's find out how wide this board is. I'm gonna come here to the edge, zero it out, just a skosh over 20 and 3 eighths. Uh, and I wanna find the middle, okay? So half of 23 eighths is 10 and 3 sixteenths. I'm gonna turn this over, and on this end, I'm gonna bring 20 or 10 and 3 sixteenths to the edge. On this side, I'm gonna be at bring 10 and 3 sixteenths to the edge, and my zero is the exact center of the board. Now from there, let's say that uh, I'm putting a door handle on there uh, that has screw holes that are three inches apart. That means I need an inch and a half either side, okay? There's an inch and a half, there's an inch and a half. Now I know that my door handle would be perfectly centered on that. So when I was lining this up the first time with the standard scale, you may notice that there's a little bit of an issue of making sure you're right at the end. So there's an option to take care of that. And that is our hook stop. For most of the rules, everything except the little six inch model, we have a stop that we can bolt that always gets you right at your zero point. So now, there's no question, when you're bringing up to the end, you know that you're right on zero. We have another stop system too called the rule stop. Now this works a little bit differently. Uh, it doesn't give you the zero point at the end, but it's designed to give you repetitive marking. So let's say I wanna make, uh, I've got 50 of these boards and I need a three inch mark on each one of them. I'm gonna take my three inch point and line it up right with the end of the stop. Clamp that down and now I can bring that up and mark three inches just as many times as I need. So this 49 and a half inch rule that I'm working with now is made for the table saw. Uh, one scale reads the way you expect it to from left to right. Uh, but the other side reads from right to left. And that is fantastic for your table saw setup. I'm gonna put this on the saw. I'm gonna use my miter gauge. This is a, a trick that I learned a long time ago. If you wanna keep that rule perfectly straight on your table, just use your miter gauge to, to hold on to it. And let's set up a cut for 17 and a half inches. So I'm gonna bring 17 and a half to my tooth. And then I'm gonna bring the fence up until it just kisses and lock it down. So let's take a look at some of the features uh, of the woodworking rules. Uh, one of them is you'll notice that the edges are beveled at 30 degrees. Now what this does is eliminate parallax viewing error because we're getting those engraved 
graduations right down next to your stock. Then we have the finger groove, which is just handy anytime you're moving the tool around. Now let's talk about how these are made. Uh, all of our rules start as an aluminum extrusion. In fact, it's the same extrusion used for our T-squares. In fact, you can see it right there that it's exactly, it lines up perfectly because they're the same thing. Then we use that extrusion for lots of our tools, the T-squares and the rules, uh, and there's just a difference in the way they're machined from that point forward. So there's just a lot of things to like about Woodpecker's Woodworking Rules. They're rigid, uh, they're relieved on the back so that the blade is always laying flat. Uh, the scale's easy to read because you've got white on red, uh, nice contrast, uh, and we've got lots of scale options on them. They're fantastic rules. If you already own our rules, I hope you know a little bit more about how to use them. If you've been thinking about them, I hope this gives you some reasons to go ahead and grab some. Hey, thanks for watching today. Be sure and subscribe to our channel so you always know when our next videos are coming up. Hit the notification bell, that way you'll get a ding. Thanks for watching. See you next time.